In this video we will discuss the Bente Bulldog and where does this dog sit? This dog sits between the modern day boxer and the ancestor thereof <coughs> known as the Brabanter Bullenweise. So this is like a Dutch because Brabant is a part of the Netherlands German type of uh, Mastiff or Bulldog in my opinion. It's more of a Bulldog. Bullenbeise means in German uh, the dog that bites the bull. So this would more be a, a Dutch German Bulldog. That being said, this dog is now extinct. It is one of the ancestors of the show dog that we now know as uh, the Boxer and that's a Boxer population completely assimilated uh, the left uh, those left of the Bullenbeise Brabante Bullenbeise next to the Brabante Bullenbeise they also used especially uh, English uh, Bulldog blood and most dominantly English Bulldog blood of show stock to further flatten their nose. And the English Bulldog blood of show stock, it's in a later phase, uh, was used to refine the dog that we know now as the boxer, has a flattened nose because of pug influences, which is just a show toy breed. So there's no functionality. This also means the boxes which is flat nose have lost a lot of functionality albeit being a nice athletic frame uh, that they have and also uh, a nice character which is all good but the functionality has been lost to a great degree and that's what they try to restore by creating the banter bulldog so, Bulldog is also uh, referring to the English term for Bullenbeiser, the German term. And Banter is a, a part of the Brabanter uh, part in this uh, breed. And it was the dog known in the Dutch regions and that so the Dutch region of Brabant. And uh, those dogs were used also in Germany and they were referred to where they came from being Brabant as the Brabant the Bullenbeiser. So the Bente Bulldog is a recreation to some degree but they still uh, started with one of um, the show dogs that we know known as the, the Boxer. So still they have some of the drawbacks of show blood show blood infusion and then they revigorate this with uh, a very good breed a breed that is uh, the direct descendant of the English Bulldog but it was still a performance blood sport mediator which is the American Pitbull Terrier so those two breeds are used create a breed that we now know as the Bantam Bulldog. And this is a great increase in the health, performance uh, possibilities and also a great contender at weight pool at events for example. As such, still not beating the Bulldog which is for its weight. In, but uh, a lot better than a regular boxer would do. It's a nice project, but for me it's only as uh, as value as a sentimental recreation. Whereas the Bente Bulldog has descendants of the Brabant the Bullenbeise, the former bread dog, and the English uh, Bloodsport Bulldog running to its veins. 
it still will be so far to a pure uh, performance type of uh, dog such as the American Pitbull Terrier. So all the good parts come from uh, American Pitbull Terrier blood. It might have a nicer view if you want something like that. But uh, there were already breeds closer to uh, the original uh, Brabant the Bullenbeise in his performance. If you would look at uh, Scott type American Bulldogs, for example, you could uh, come very close to the looks and also the function of uh, the Brabant the Bullenbeise without the infusion of uh, show breed blood to show an English Bulldog which carries pug blood. And that's the part I don't like. That being said, um, it's far better than the original boxer as a show dog and would, uh, would be a joy to have. Boxers have a nice uh, temperament, but they're quite plagued with diseases, especially heart, epilepsy, but also cancer. And if using a performance breed will greatly revigorate those uh, detrimental traits. So I'm not against the breed, but I think it could do a lot better. Hope you like this video. Have a great day. The dog on the leash here is a very small dog. Also carries Boo and Terrier blood. It is known as the Petrodale Terrier, also known as the Black Fell Terrier or the Black Dogs. And this is smooth coated variety and also carries some of the original uh, Bulldog blood to its veins by means especially of the Northumberland Terrier. Have a great day. In this video we will address the topic is there also gameness in the animal kingdom, so in the wild animals? And the short answer is yes, but they are hard to find and not many uh, are that. And why is this? Because in nature normally animals are there to survive. And if they don't uh, survive because they have games and they want to do to go on even against opposition that is much stronger so even if needed to the death they won't uh, be living long enough to reproduce their genes maximum maximally so that being said let's look at some examples we will talk at least about lions we will talk about uh, martin's family but we also talk about uh, some of the civet cat family. So first start with lions. In the animal kingdom, the male lions are those that have that gameless attribute. And why? The female uh, lions are the best hunters. So how come that those male lions are those uh, that have the gameless trait? Whereas the lioness are the hunters, the male lions are the protectors. So, especially if other male lions come and try to take over this uh, group of lions, and, uh, and uh, oftentimes they also kill, kill the lion whelps because they don't want to uh, yeah, raise other uh, male lions with genes but their own. And that's a big uh, problem for that group. Uh, you will be wasting uh, genetic diversity. And those male lions, once they get uh, challenged by another male lion, they will fight, even if that would mean that they would die. And sometimes they even face off with two upcoming male lions they will battle that one lion together and after that either be a, a two male two, so two uh, male lion uh, group or one will attack the other again so only one will uh, 
remain. Depends a little bit how the situation uh, unfolds. Well, that's an interesting fact. Other uh, very game animals uh, must be the family of martens. Martens, even if you get pet martens like ferrets, they will happily engage with uh, a cat four times its weight, which is also a very good predator. Or uh, a dog, <laughs> even ten times its weight is very often the case. But sometimes even attacking herders, like uh, Dutch Shepherds, Malinois. And of course, it would be very easy for such a big dog, for any bigger dog that's uh, to kill uh, a ferret if they are themselves still very capable of But oftentimes, those household pets are already uh, bred. They have such uh, a lack of courage that they will have a, a hard uh, time with a ferret. But so, a ferret is a domesticated polecat. And also, polecats are known to fight cats, sometimes even uh, uh, venomous snakes, such as, uh, yeah, how do we say that, uh, tick viper is the best uh, way to describe them, we have European viper for example, and a similar case could, could be made for an entirely different family, being that of the civet cats, where they have the mongooses fighting with the uh, big venomous snakes and also killing them. But sometimes also those snakes kill them. So it's a very uh, interesting uh, thing. But other, let's stay with the martyrs family. Other very uh, uh, game martyrs are for example the wolverine uh, that even uh, chases away wolves or bears or even polar bears from uh, their own prey. And <laughs> it's such a compact gladiator. Other examples are uh, uh, river otters or other otters that even uh, fight and kill small crocodiles, caimans, or also snakes, eh? even uh, small anacondas have been killed by them. Other examples are the, the, the meager weasel who can be like 50 to 100 gram and killing rabbits more than 20 times its weight and yeah, a rabbit is still uh, still just a prey but they will also engage very hard with each other they will engage rats and rats are quite capable of uh, killing animals including their own for the size they are quite big and they will engage a bigger rat and kill it they have a really good, feisty little buggers. And you have a little bit bigger, the ermine, similar traits. Polecats already you mentioned. But also, uh, there are some martens that are less likely to fight, including uh, tree marten and stone marten. But also, you have to, uh, the fisher marten in the United States, like a smaller wolverine. Also very interesting to uh, to see. Then we had the civet cats. I already mentioned the mongooses, but also the jinnet cats, which is a different trait. And fossas are known to be uh, ferocious little uh, fighters. Another example could be made for, uh, and I didn't get into this yet. There's another very big cat that is really uh, going. Hey. against a very stiff competition and it would be either the snow leopard that you will even face off with four uh, livestock protection breeds, for example Tibbet and Mastiffs, and also the Jaguar, which is able to kill anaconda but also crocodile types. But both the snow leopard and also uh, the Jaguar are very fierce uh, and also solo fighting uh, big cats and also sometimes Siberian uh, tigers or Bengal tigers face of it very strong uh, prey, even bears. So 
so also very uh, uh, strong and also a beer can win from a tiger of course but this is not the type of game as I was referring to. Another example of the Martin family would be uh, the badges. Badges are known for many a dog as the ultimate test. Some say that the otter is even a better test, but they are almost extinct everywhere in Europe. But very ferocious, will not back down. But there's an even more ferocious uh, badger. I'm not talking about the American badger, which is a lot more aggressive than the European one, but a lot smaller as well. So therefore the European is often considered as a bigger prey, but also the American margin. Now American badger is a very formidable quarry, but there are other examples, especially the honey badger of Africa, which faces off on a regular basis with a very big, strong competition, including including lions, uh, panthers, even hyenas and the like. And uh, they also face off with cobras and other very deadly uh, material. They just very able to withstand them, but also they have a don't uh, care attitude. They will just face anything, a little bit like the wolverine. But the badger has a better skin. Uh, extremely sharp, uh, long claws, also able to dig. They also face off with, uh, with bee stings, who just don't uh, seem to bother them much. They crack open an entire beehive. They are an awesome creature altogether. Well, I hope you like this. If you like this video, I'm going to give you also a little bit more of insight that gameless can be a trait also found in nature. And why could be a big question. In case of lions, it would be easier to uh, explain. Uh, if that lion loses his pride, then he will be in big trouble because he's already old and it would be very unlikely that he would be overthrowing another male lion from its pride. So he has to hunt for himself. And often die. Whereas uh, the honey badger is yeah, just a, such a formidable warrior, and he, he tends to be uh, surviving also the wolverine. Many of other uh, big creatures will just move away when they see the wolverine because they already know how much of a warrior they are. Same with uh, honey badger, but uh, it's quite hard to understand why they pick such a formidable quarry. Perhaps because others don't, and they just fill the niche. But it's interesting to uh, conceptualize a little bit more. In an earlier video, we discussed uh, gamers in nature, and we gave examples of creatures that can also be game in nature. So gameless is the ability and the willingness to go on even if the uh, odds are stacked against you. An example would be the honey badger that will face off with a, a leopard or a big baboon or a lion. And other examples are male lions that defend their pride against other male lions, even till the dead. And multiple examples were uh, uh, mentioned, including also wolverine and, for example, mongooses, or mongooses, so, so to speak, fighting with king cobras, etc. But that being said, we didn't include canine members in this uh, overview. So canine members like for example the fox or uh, the wolf or jackal or coyotes etc. And that is a, there's a reason for that because uh, canines are very brave and also able to take down uh, big quarries. 
but they work very often in a group and for example solo uh, hunting canines such as foxes oftentimes don't take down the big quarry and then you might say yeah I know a fox that has killed a lamb or, or killed a baby deer or killed a, a baby hawk yeah sure and they do that and that's still a big prey for a fox but the same size this better dog here he would face off even with an other adult hawk not win mind you but it's a different kind of bravery so how come that in nature where they have to fight to survive and also have a very harsh life this game this is not found in the canine family whereas activity domestication so you will some members of the canine family are one of the gamest animals there are and especially those that were bred for uh, the gladiator roles being in, in the earth and the terriers working formidable quarry like a badger or sometimes above ground against uh, the hawk that I mentioned but especially those bred for the pit yeah? there were dogs that would go on and continue against other dogs even if they were ripped to, to pieces and still be friendly to the handlers but also dogs that would face off with lions yeah? and everything they uh, threw at them and that's an interesting fact because that gives you also insight at what I mentioned earlier that I think the Bruin Terrier breeds are the most developed dog breeds there are because they are so much developed outside the scope of the natural uh, scope that a wolf and natural canine has so if you're interested in this topic I also have uh, the literature uh, studied about those uh, extreme uh, activities that they had so especially uh, against the bull but also against the bear bear baiting and against each other of course the gladiator type bull and terriers uh, the modern version of that would be the American Pitbull Terrier or the bull and terrier of the past but they also fought lions I have a video about that you can find that if you want to it's called lion baiting it's on my channel so uh, Please sit back and enjoy if you want to and see you the next time. Bye bye.